Hey everybody, how's it going? All right, so it's been a few days, but we're back with another technique for you to um, utilize in those amazing visual journals that everyone's creating right now. So today's technique is all about um, creating some really cool like textures and stuff on either one of the pages in your journals or um, I've chosen to do it on the cover of my journal because this is one of my favorite techniques so I want it to be like forefront and the first thing that people see when they pick up my journal. So I'm going to show you the technique. It takes a few steps and then I'll flip it over and show you a finished version so you can kind of see how it goes from beginning to end um, So we won't, because we won't be able to do the entire thing right now. Um, so the materials that you're going to need today are just some basic aluminum foil and Elmer's glue or um, I'm using Mod Podge again because I love Mod Podge but you do not have to have this. Um, you can basically make Mod Podge using Elmer's glue and just adding a little bit of water to it or you can just use regular glue today. All right so I'm gonna flip the camera down so I can show you what I'm doing. All right, so you can see here, um, I have just a regular piece of aluminum foil. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to crumple my foil and into a ball like this, and then I'm going to spread it back out. So it's got all those nice, great um, ridges and lumps and stuff in it. And then, I am going to make sure it fits. And if it doesn't go completely to the corners, that's okay. If it's a little big, you're just gonna crumple it up um, a little bit more. All right, so that looks about right. Let me crumple it just a little bit. Okay, so once you have it kind of measured out, set it to the side. And I am using Mod Podge as my glue, but again, for this step, um, just plain old Elmer's glue will work. The stick glue isn't the greatest for this because um, you need a really thick layer because the foil has all of those kind of folds and ridges in it. So you wanna make sure you get it um, inside each of those folds. See, I'm gonna put a whole lot on here. So I'm going to spread, spread, spread with a big paintbrush and you can easily rinse glue and Mod Podge out of your paintbrush, so no worries about that. All right, so I got a good layer going. So I'm going to take my foil and again, it's okay if it kind of hangs off the side or whatever. Um, once it dries, you can always go back and cut those edges off to make it fit exactly like you want. All right, so I have that glued down pretty good. Um, and as you can see, lots of lumps and bumps and beautiful textures in there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just some plain white paint. I'm choosing white just because um, I like to have white as my base color. So then whatever color I decide I'm in the mood to put over this will show up. Um, if you use a darker color, then as you know, all colors don't show up on darker colors. So I am going to cover this in white paint. You could also use um, gesso if that's something that you happen to have lying around your house. If not, white, I'm using plain white acrylic and I'm just gonna get this on here real fast. All right, so you're gonna wanna get it into all of those little crevices, just like that. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do next, this, pro this, is a, this technique is kind of a process, so you can't do it all in one quick sitting. You could do it all in one day, but not all in one sitting. Um, you're gonna let that dry. And once it dries, you can go back over it with any color that you want. Um, because you have all these wonderful valleys and crevices and 
textures and things in this technique, it's really nice to go over it with multiple colors. Um, and they all kind of pop out in different areas when you put multiple colors on here. And then once you get the colors that you want on here, the last thing you're gonna do is do a really thin layer of white or silver or a really light color and that will highlight all of these top edges and really give it nice dimension. So I have finished one side of mine. I'm gonna flip it over so you can see it. Um, so here's my finished side and I don't know how well you can see that. Here, I'll flip the camera up so you can see it better. Um, but I chose to work with um, blues and purples, um, excuse me, for my cover. So what I did was I painted it white and then once it dried, I went over it with some blues and purples and then I mixed some gray in there as well. And once that dried, I went over the edges with white. So it gives it that really kind of weathered, um, torn look. And then I took some washi tape and I lined the edge with it. You do not have to have washi tape. If you don't have that, no big deal. Um, you can use regular tape, you can use duct tape, um, you can use anything you want. It's art, there's no rules. You can do anything you wanna do. Um, but the base of the technique is crunching up that foil. What's really cool too is you can put um, more layers of foil on top of it and really build up like a thick, almost mountainous terrain with the foil if you want. So again, you can do that on one of your pages um, or like I did, I did it on the cover just because it can get a little thick and I want it to be the first thing that people see when they see my journal. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And as always, if you have questions, if you have suggestions for techniques that you would like to try, please email me krissi.oden at flower-mound.com. All right, see you soon. Thank you.